So Lee Williams is going on a tour of the United Kingdom. He's taken it upon himself to educate the British people uh, on the Māori of the South Pacific in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Now, in a conversation with Lee Williams, you won't find the principles of honesty, ab objectivity, integrity, or truthfulness in any conversation with Lee Williams. Just explain to our viewers what, who the Māori are, what the situation is in New Zealand, and why you've been vocal on it. Okay. Well, there's such a thing now in New Zealand called revisionist historians, and these are Māori-backed historians, and they are changing New Zealand history. So this is really important because Lee's just made the claim that someone is offering an alternative history in Aotearoa, that they're revising our national history. Now, Lee Williams, he uh, spent 11 years as a screw. He was a prison warden uh, for the Department of Corrections. And so this is where he has learnt his entire history of the Māori people. He didn't go on to Marae and speak to Komatua or go to a university and take courses in Indigenous studies. He's learned his entire background history of Māori from a prison. And they came from an island called Hawakia. No one really knows. I think um, if I get, I might, I might mispronounce that Hawakia or Hawaii or whatever. And no one knows where it is. If they believe it's um, uh, Hawaii or some Pacific island. But they came there 800 years ago and there were people in new zealand that were there mm -hmm. and they met them at the shores when the maori came there mm -hmm. now these people were genocided they were genocided Why? and cannibalized and there's lots of evidence <laughs> oh talk about the pot calling the kettle black he just warns us that he's about to that he's about to debunk an alternative version of history and he presents a conspiracy theory. So from the New Zealand, uh, the Penguin New Zealand History of New Zealand, Michael King wrote, despite a plethora of amateur theories about Melanesian, South American, Egyptian, Phoenician and Celtic colonisation of New Zealand, there is not a shred of evidence that the first human settlers were anything other than Polynesians. So there has been no scientific archaeological findings of any other civilization or human species other than Māori in Aotearoa. So a character called Martin Dutre, he is an American who started up the Celtic conspiracy theory where the um, Europeans came out here prior to Polynesians and there the, were these kind of European supermen that were the size of um, the Empire State Building and they got around in Raglan and it's just a vast, weird conspiracy theory and it doesn't hold up to any credibility. Also, Martin Dutre was a member of the hate group, the One New Zealand Foundation, so, of course, he has a reason to try and um, corrupt uh, the history of Māori. So, here's the reason why there were no uh, British settlers uh, prior to Tanga Te Whenua. First off, this conspiracy theory is used for colonisation justification. It means for British New Zealanders... You know, what you did to the pre-Polynesian European British settlers, that means it's okay what we do to you. Um, no, it's a conspiracy and it's a myth. And here's the reason why the British never arrived in the South Pacific. First off, it is 27,000 kilometres distance. It's a huge distance. And the British or the Celtics at the time, simply did not have the technology. And this is technologies that Polynesians are far ahead, ahead of the rest of the human race on. It's celestial navigation. They had the right uh, vessels to travel 
vast distances. They they under they could do um, fishing out at sea. They were just they were just superior at seafaring than what Europeans were going to be for for the next a thousand years. Also, the reason why the British couldn't have made it out into the South Pacific is because the South Pacific is blocked off by two continents. It's blocked off by Africa. It's also blocked off by the American continent. You have to either go via the Cape of Good Hope or um, or around South America. It's just, it's impossible to get out here in with the technology that the British had. And then you've got other challenges. Most British mariners died of scurvy. Um, half the merchant fleet died of scurvy. They didn't understand that you needed to have vitamin C when you're traveling for years on end at sea. Also, you need ports to replenish at. Well, there's no European ports uh, outside of Europe. Europe. Europeans haven't set up uh, colonies in South America or South Africa that you can island hop all the way into the South Pacific. And even Cook had to. He had to go and get replenishment up in modern-day Indonesia at Batavia. Also, the British don't have celestial navigation of the Southern Hemisphere. Remember, they still think the place is, the world's flat. They don't realise that there is a different set of stars in the South Pacific. And also, they don't have any charts of the South Pacific. So why would you get in a boat to travel to somewhere that you don't even know exists and you don't know why you're going there. Now, for Polynesians, they know a landmass exists. So they're in the Cook Islands, or Rarotonga, they're seeing birds fly off in a certain direction and not come back. Now, birds don't fly out to the middle of nowhere. So it's quite easy. You follow the birds on a thousand kilometer journey from the Cook Islands to the Kermadec Islands, then you watch where the birds are flying to next, and they fly from. Then they are flying from the Kermadec Islands to Aotearoa. This is a plausible exploration for Polynesians and Maori to reach Aotearoa, but for Europeans to reach the South Pacific, before Polynesians, it's simply it's unrealistic and it's a fantasy. And that's the real alternative history. Now, over over the uh, since since Captain Cook arrived, anyway, the Maori basically were um, a stone Stone Age people, and they were mm. a Stone Age people. They only had their wooden patus like clubs. So this is where you get an education on Maori that you learn from a prison. Now, in reality. Māori were the greatest explorers in the history of, of the human race. Now, 6,000 years ago, the first Polynesians left the island of Taiwan. They spread through uh, Micronesia. They managed to get to uh, eastern Polynesia. They settled islands there, Samoa, Tonga, Fiji. Then they um, travelled over to the West Pacific where they settled in uh, Hawaii and also they managed to get to South America and North America a thousand years before Columbus. Now not only were they brilliant at celestial navigation, navigating by the stars, they had a great understanding of astronomy well before Europeans even had an idea of of uh, astronomy and this is they started this exploration when the first pyramids were being built and so they managed to uh, settle an area the size of Russia and how we know that this is uh, this happened is they brought the Kumara over uh, from South America now, we know the Kumara didn't just float over the Pacific Ocean to get to Aotearoa because the word came with it as well. So that means that humans brought the Kumara over from South America. So uh, it's a bit rich for Lee to say that, uh, 
that Polynesians and Māori were primitive cavemen, when in reality they were the greatest explorers in the history of mankind. And it would have been pretty scary, I would have thought, for the British soldier. And luckily for the British soldier, they had muskets. And, mm. and uh, so, you know, and, and, and they were obviously much further ahead in the evolutionary chain to, to yeah. suppress the, the Maori and bring them into line with Christianity or where, whatever you like. Mm. This is where Lee tries to convince people of his racial superiority, like there is some racial hierarchy uh, within our species of Homo sapiens and, and that maybe it's based on skin pigmentation. The reality is, is that the British soldier was no more superior to um, Māori warrior at all in any way, shape or form and intelligence or nothing. We are the same species and there is no racial hierarchy based on skin pigmentation. It doesn't exist. This is what happens when people like Lee Williams uh, indulge in ideals like fascism or eugenics and they think that there's some kind of racial hierarchy and that he's at the top of it and he's racially superior to other members of the Homo sapiens species. He's not. He's superior to no one. And neither was the British soldier. The difference with the British soldier and the Māori warrior, it was just a different technology in firearms. So the Māori actually had more muskets than the British army that were in the country at the time. Uh, they had a lot of gunpowder. But the New Zealand colonial government had brought in the new breech-loading rifles that they were later going to be used in World War One. Now you can fire off a lot more rounds uh, with a magazine uh, as opposed to with a magazine or 10 round magazine of of bullets as opposed to having to um, reload a musket. But even still then when the British Army, the superpower of the time, still got handed their ass by Māori on par sites. So, for example, um, the insurgent general, who was probably the greatest tactician in the history of Aotearoa New Zealand, Rifa Titukawaru, he managed to defeat the British in the Taranaki, outnumbered 10 to 1. He always routed them. He knew how to kill their commanders. He took out uh, Major von Tempsky, killed him. He was a superior, more intelligent commander than, than von Tempsky. And that's a fact. So this idea that that Lee has that oh, maybe he's racially superior based on his skin pigmentation, it's, it's not true. I have British heritage in me and also Māori heritage. And I know there is my British heritage is not superior to my Māori heritage at all. It's the same species, Homo sapiens. And um, so, but the Maori lived in a perpetual state of, um, of war, um, genocide, um, cannibalism, and infanticide. They lived like that all the time. <laughs> oh my God, Lee! Oh, once again, this is a case of the pot calling the kettle black. Now. The British went to war with everyone. In fact, they went to war with the French for on and off for over a thousand years. And he has the audacity to say that Māori are warlike. In one war between the English and French, they went to war with each other for a hundred years. It was called the Hundred Year War. Now that's a long time to have a war. I mean, the people fighting that war who started it, That'll be deceased. And then the people who are fighting it 100 years later, they're going, why are we fighting this war with the French? What started the war? You know, it, that, that's just ridiculous for anyone who's British to accuse others of being warmongers. It's just pot kettle blackly. And as for cannibalism, King Charles II of the royal family well he was a a beastly cannibal 
the eight half is caught. And also during Europe, during World War II, cannibalism was rife. Europeans were getting around eating human beings. And this is in the 20th century. And as for the 21st century, well, a character called Mark Hobson, he ate four people just recently. You know, Māori gave up cannibalism hundreds of years ago. But what Lee's doing here in this history of Māori is he's trying to make it appear that all Māori culture equals is just warfare and cannibalism. And that's not true. It was a really rich um, culture and it had, had a lot more to it. Of course cannibalism happened, but that was a minor function within that society. It wasn't what it is about entirely as what Lee's making it out to be. And you know, maybe he really needs to have a look at how much cannibalism happened in Britain. So, and they had a thing called Utu in, in Maridom. So if like, if you lived over the hill and I lived over the hill and I heard you say you, you slighted me and it's my, it's my mission then to come and attack your village. And this was all over New Zealand, but very predominantly the North Island. And uh, they come over the hill. I take my tribe over the hill with, with my weapons and massacre your tribe. And I come for you. I would kill you. And I would make sure I ate you. So back in Britain, they used to have this custom where uh, two men that had managed to offend each other, maybe he called him a nasty name or he slighted him or he... He said something that, that hurt his honour. What they would do is this thing called a duel. So two men would get muskets and then they would march 10 metres apart and then they would turn around and commit homicide against each other and try and kill the other one. And that just sounds like the most ridiculous, stupidest, dumbest custom I've ever heard of. And, that, and that's not where it ends either. I mean, also they had this these things called witch hunters, where men would go out and accuse um, some young maiden of being possessed by demons and that she was secretly getting around casting wicked spells on people. And so what they would do is they would uh, arrest her and tie her up to a pole and burn her to death. Or they they would drown her until she admitted that she was a witch, and then they'll kill her. So she didn't really have an option of anything but dying and admitting that she was a witch. So if Lee wants to talk about barbaric customs that are within Māoridom, maybe he should pick up a history book while he's back in Britain and find out a wee bit more about his own history. When the British got there, they signed the treaty, uh, 1840. The British stopped all that. They stopped the cannibalism. They stopped the infanticide. They, st they stopped um, basically the, 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 all, all of the above, the cannibalism, the, 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 the war, genocide. They stopped it all. Um, mm. And the Maori have blamed us for it ever since. It's been, you know, the... uh, not true. None of that's true at all. So within 23 years of signing the Treaty of Waitangi, uh, the British Army attacked... Uh, Māori, and they went up basically on a campaign of land acquisition. That's why we have an event called, historically, the New Zealand Wars, as, or as I like to call it, the, um, the War of British Aggression and Land Confiscation. As for cannibalism, the British made no attempts to uh, stop any cannibalism Every British colonist was here for their own personal gain. That no one was racing around going, hey, look, all you Māoris, can we just stop the cannibalism? There is absolutely no records of that happening at all. Um, Māori just voluntarily, as their faith changed Christianity, decided that it was best off if they avoided cannibalism. It just went out of fashion. As far as infanticide goes, I there's no records of it, just nothing. I, I don't know where where Lee got that that idea. 
And as for genocide, well, the thing is, is that if you're the only gene pool and there's only one race in a land, you can't genocide yourself. It's just, that doesn't make sense to me. No. Nah. They say the British, you know, it, it, New Zealand was such a fantastic place for the British got here. And, but it wasn't, it wasn't. The British yeah. saved Maori from themselves because their population was disappearing because they just lived in war. They killed the, the baby girls because all they wanted was warriors. What leads preaching here as a form of colonial indoctrination? Now, this has happened across the entire uh, British Empire. What it is, it's called a white saviour mentality. It's where, it's where um, Australian, British, British Australians have been telling the Aboriginal people, oh, if it wasn't because of colonisation, we, we saved you from yourselves. Canadi British Canadians, they say this to First Nation, First Nation people in North America. Oh, if it wasn't because of colonisation, we saved you from yourselves. And also here in Aotearoa, it's a part of indoctrination of what you do to First Nation people as you tell them that if it wasn't because of us coming here to steal your land off you, you would not have survived. It's a form of indoctrination to pretend that the colonists, they were benevolent and they were kind and stealing your land. It's better off with us if we have your land as opposed to you having your own land. And in reality, it's a load of bollocks. And uh, anyway, they, 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 were, they were dying off quicker than what they were breeding. Um, they, they would have ended up wiped out. Within 50 years of signing the Treaty of Waitangi, 52% of the Māori population had perished. They'd had their lands confiscated and basically stolen by British colonists. They had their economic base stripped from them and they were forced into poverty. The British immigrants that had arrived were riddled with diseases and they would spread cholera and diseases like the measles into the Māori population. Uh, also, the British army that attacked um, different Māori tribes and just ruthlessly used a scorched earth policy to try and exterminate the Māori population. Basically, the British army should hold its head in shame that it attempted to genocide uh, Māori. But the thing is, is that earlier in 1840, the British had signed the Treaty of Waitangi, and in Article 2 of the Treaty of Waitangi, it promised Māori that they would have undisturbed estates, forest, and fisheries. This meant that the colonial government was not entitled and had agreed that it was not permitted to steal a single acre of Māori land. But that's precisely what it did. It went and breached the Treaty of Waitangi. In fact, the colonial government attempted to genocide the Māori race. And it's, it's really, it's a miracle that Māori survived into the 21st century. And the bin bread, there's not one single Māori left today, but it's 100% Māori. All, are wow. diluted. All of them are diluted. I don't believe that Lee Williams is a hundred percent English. I don't think so that he meets his own expectations of blood quantum. I think that everyone who has invaded uh, the British Isles from the Saxons to the Normans to the Romans to the Vikings, I think that he is not purebred. This is the problem when people indulge in fascism. They start to get these ideologies of eugenics that people need to meet your expectations of of that you have a certain blood quantum. Oh, oh you must be five percent Scottish or ten percent. Like, what part of what part of my body is Scottish and what part is Irish? Is is that is that there? Is that the Maori part, or is that I there? Is is it Irish? I mean. Seriously, you can't split human beings up. We are the we are Homo sapiens. 
There is no such thing as blood quantum. This is fascism. This is what a little man with a stupid, silly little moustache and the right stag who used to exterminate people on an industrial scale called Adolf Hitler, he believed in eugenics. So does Lee Williams believe in eugenics. It's fascism. Plain and simple. Heritage, they're, they're English, Scots, Welsh, Irish, or Dutch, they will never recognise that. And uh, especially if they're British, and they will just recognise their Maori bit. Come on, Lee. My name's Joe Trinder. I can't get any more British than that. It's not exactly a Polynesian name. The word Trinder, it actually originates from the British Isles. Like, I'm not going out of my way to disguise who I am, that I have British heritage. And I'm not in denial of it. In fact, you'll find that most Māori people, they're really quite proud of their British heritage. They accept that they have British ancestry. They're not in denial of it. But then they shouldn't be in denial of their Māori heritage either. And they shouldn't be put to shame of it by the likes of Lee Williams, who's making demands of people's blood quantum. And to add to their authenticity, they get the tattoos all over the face and the women get their, 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 their barcodes and what you call mm. them on the face. It's just disgusting that Lee would go and insult um, a Māori tradition of our wahine getting moko kowai and then him calling it a barcode. That's racism. That's point blank racism. The United Nations have said to the government, you've got to give 50% of all New Zealand's wealth, everything, to Maori. I'm not going to say give it back to Maori because they never had it in the first place. Wow. Everything to Maori. And these people are only, they've only got a bit of Maori running through the veins. What Lee's talking about here is a document called UNDRIP, or the United Nations Declaration for the Rights of Indigenous People. What UNDRIP doesn't do, that the disinformation that Lee's giving you, is that it, that he says that it hands half the wealth of the nation over to the indigenous population, is a load of bollocks. What it does, it is a set of human rights for indigenous people, and it entitles them to pursue self-determination within a colonial nation state. Now, Lee's own country, Great Britain, the United Kingdom, they signed up to it straight away. They didn't have a problem with it because they realised this was a set of human rights. But New Zealand, under Prime Minister Helen Clark, refused to sign up to it. Probably because her family were a colonial settler family that had, that had taken a farm of confiscated land in the Waikato. So she seemed to have malignant ideas similar to Lee on indigenous rights. So you can't say, I'm a Maori. No, well, you're not, technically, you're not a Maori, you're a part Maori. Hmm. You've got a bit more Maori running through your veins. And there's no, there's barely any half Maori about there. They're all a lot less, you know, it goes, it goes from a four to half to, to, to a quarter to an eighth to 16th, 132, whatever, one, one in 64. And, um, and, and basically most of them are one in 64. I would say that Lee has 4.5% uh, of Saxon and that he has another 13.2% of Norman and uh, he probably has around about 32.00001% of Roman and he probably has another 16% of Viking, you know, everyone who decided to invade Britain and rape and pillage it um, would be uh, Lee's ancestors. Because I'm still to meet a full-blooded Englishman. I've never met one, ever. But Englishmen like Lee have this strange fascination with other people's blood quantum, but they'll never, ever look at their own blood quantum whether they're purebred. So they have this expectation. They go around the world. Oh, you know, you need to meet my expectation of blood quantum. When he doesn't even meet his own expectation of blood quantum. 
people knew I was a white. I was a white supremacist. People knew I was a YouTuber. I don't agree with Lee that he is a white supremacist. I'd say more he's more of like a pink supremacist because he ain't white. His color skin pigmentation is not white. It's pink. Yeah, he's one of the pink ones. Yeah. Kia ora, thank you for joining me. This is Joe Trinder for Aotearoa Actual. Kia ora.